Okay, welcome guys. Uh, in this session, uh, basically we are going to review the questions of the FM, uh, June uh, FMG 2022. Now this is a mixed bag questions. Uh, what I am trying to explain you is the question that was asked uh, from the QRS session that we had around 10 to 15 days back. So I will be showing the, the questions that came directly from the QRS session that way we had at the Rice Medical Academy. The, the first question that was there was regarding the, the cardiac tamponade that was based on the back strat that was a straightforward easy question. They have given the question there was decrease in the blood pressure, the neck veins were full, muffled heart sound that was a very classical case we have discussed almost the same case and that was the cardiac tamponade. The second question was you can see that it is written is there was in the question they have given not the ECG but they have written no P wave irregularly irregularly ARR interval the answer was active fibrillation. Again, it was a direct straightforward question from the QRS. Then the next question, there was slight confusion uh, regarding the, the meningitis part. They have given the CSF analysis. Many of the students are saying that it was predominantly neutrophils. Many are saying predominantly lymphocytes. If it is uh, in any of the case, we have discussed both the two. You can see in the green color that was the if the neutrophils were there, it is bacterial meningitis. If it was lymphocyte, it was tubercular meningitis. The next thing was again a straightforward question from surgery, mouse in the breast that is fibroadenoma. Then the next question was the iron chelator. If someone is having iron toxicity due to uh, multiple transfusion or maybe taking iron folic acid for a long time. So the iron chelator has to be given that is this feroxamine. Then the next question was from the Reynolds phenomena, again a direct question from the QRS, uh, Reynolds phenomena, they asked that what is the treatment, they have given in the question, the, the, the finger is turning white, uh, the bluish, the red, they asked that what is the treatment that you are going to give, it is CCP. The next was the question from the heart failure, they asked the question in a way that he, there is a patient of heart failure, there are certain group of drugs that decreases the mortality, there are certain group that decreases the the, that decreases the symptoms only. So we have discussed very clearly, you can see here, we can have discussed very clearly mortality is decreased by ACE inhibitor, ARB and ARNI and beta blocker and they have given one of the example of ACE inhibitor that was the lisinopril. Then there was a question from the, the pathology part, dystrophic calcification, the example of dystrophic calcification and we have discussed that atherosclerosis is one of the example of the dystrophic calcification. Just below to that, we have discussed one more line. You can see here the drug causing pulmonary fibrosis is the bleomycin and boost sulfur. Uh, one of the options was there. I think bleomycin was given in the choice and that was the answer to that question. Just next to that, we have discussed about uh, three main stains and one of them was asked in your exam, the stain for the hemocytin. It was pearls, prussian blue. Then uh, just next line, you can see that, okay, here you can see that uh, there are two times that happen in the QRS that two continuous questions were asked. We have discussed the hemocytin just below that we have discussed the cat scratch disease and again that was asked in your exam this time both the questions were there. The, the causative agent for the, the uh, cat scratch disease is the Bartonella hansali. Then from this diagram there was a question from the pharmacology that they asked the mechanism of action. Some are saying for the mechanism of action of aspirin or some are saying clopidogrel. Both are there. Aspirin is the antiplatelet drug. Clopidogrel, what happens in the clopidogrel is it is an ADP receptor inhibitor, P2Y12 inhibitor. So, uh, aspirin, uh, if they have given the choice that uh, aspirin belongs to which category, it is the antiplatelet group. Then there was a question from the, the Brown Sequet syndrome. They have given the image hemisection of the spinal cord and they asked that which sensation will be lost on which side. In the QRS, we have discussed that the mnemonic is top. That top is temperature and the pain is going to be lost on the opposite side, TOP. So by that we have solved the question. The next thing I have asked is, the I have highlighted again in the yellow color that the most sensitive test that you will do in a case of iron deficiency anemia, it is the serum ferritin. They have given some language, they have given the clinical units, but that was the crux. If you know that statement, the answer was going to be correct for you. Then they are just below to that, again you can see that just we have discussed that iron deficiency anemia may the most sensitive test that is to be done is serum ferritin. Uske just we have discussed that myasthenia gravis is which type of hypersensitivity is, it is type 2. 
then there was a question from retinoblastoma they have given that there is the white eye reflex the the white eye reflex that was there in the child they have not given the image we have discussed the image also but they have not given the image and the answer to that question was retinoblastoma then there was a question from bronchiectasis so some are saying that they have given the the ct scan and some are saying they are given the the x ray you can see that we have discussed the signet ring appearance the tram track appearance in the ct scan that is the the copious sputum that the patient will have and that is suggestive of the bronchiectasis then there was a question from lung cancer again the question is not very clear but they have asked that which is the most common cancer right so it, again it will depend that what are the other things that they have given they are asking for smoker non smoker smoker is going to be squamous cell non smoker is going to be adenocarcinoma and both we have discussed both we have discussed then there was a question from the x ray they have given there was the trachea was shifting towards the opposite side and the absent there was the breast sound was absent on one side it was tension pneumothorax there was a question from the the gilbert syndrome we have discussed the the hyperbil uh, congenital hyperbilirubinemia and one of them was the gilbert syndrome where unconjugated bilirubin will be high but the condition is not very severe so it presents in the age group of 20 to 30s there will be on and off jaundice will be there and this is what they have asked unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia is seen in which condition it was gilbert syndrome we have discussed about cystosomia cells there was a question on cystosomia that cystosomia leads to which cancer cystosomia leads to urinary bladder cancer it is the squamous cell type of urinary bladder cancer then there was a question from the schimmer's test they have not given the image of schimmer's test they have given the values that litmus paper is placed and they have written that right eye 5 mm uh, left eye 10 mm or maybe somewhat values were given that was the test that is done for the dry eyes and treatment for the dry eyes you have to give the the artificial tears or the lubricants then there was a question from the this was the the exit image that came we have discussed in the qrs also the the viral keratitis that was the dendritic ulcer that we see then there was a question from uh, the the challenge you on there is a painless nodule the the image was not there but they have given the scenario there was a painless nodule on the upper eyelid that is the case of challenge you and we have written all the things you can see in the painless upper eyelid it is challenge you then there was a question from the water's view i have not shown you the x ray but i have made the x ray that there will be the mouth will be open in the water's view there was the x ray was given and they asked that what is the view the mouth is open and the x ray was done it is the water's view it is done to see the maxillary sinus then there was a question from the menius disease although it is somehow not a direct question but you can see that i have written tullius phenomena and i have explained you what is tullius phenomena that whenever the patient will have the the loud voice whenever the patient will experience a loud voice the patient will develop vertigo tinnitus that is called as the tullio phenomena right so they have given in the question mai bola tha ki jab bhi patient ko loud voice ka exposure hota hai the patient gets symptomatic the patient will have a tinnitus will have a vertigo that is a case of menius disease then we have discussed about the the nasopharyngioma i told you that whenever there is cervical lymphadenopathy if they say a uh, massive cervical lymphadenopathy it is going towards the the nasopharyngioma is going towards the nasopharyngioma although they are the age group that they have given was the 60 year of see nasopharyngioma has uh, we can say bipolar age group bachcho mein bhi ho sakta hai or it can happen in the elderly then there was a in the question in the anesthesia although the language is not very clearly framed by the question but that the question was ki jab hum elective surgery kar rahe hain to what should be the ideal uh, thing to be said to the patient for nbm the i told you that the current guideline is nbm to prevent the, the nail by mouth to prevent the aspiration pneumonitis is for solid it is 6 hours 6 hours uh, prior to that the patient should not eat anything then there was a question from the psoriasis you can see at the top i have written that if there is a infection in the psoriatic region it is called as a gutted psoriasis aur unhone ek image diya tha gutted psoriasis ka back ka image tha multiple patches thi that was a image of the gutted psoriasis then uh, we have discussed about the cobner's phenomena although i have asked many of the students but they were not able to tell the correct language of the question but there was a question from cobner's phenomena cobner's phenomena ka kya hota hai if there is a patient is having let's say psoriasis or usko right elbow pe lesion hai and if the patient gets trauma to the left side of the hand the the new uh, 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 psoriatic lesion will develop there that is called as the cobner's phenomena that is seen in mainly in psoriasis can be seen in other conditions also 
in the psm we have discussed about the epidemic dropsy epidemic dropsy is seen when the patient uh, if there is in the mustard oil uh, the mixed with the argumen oil it will lead to epidemic dropsy the patient will have ascites will have the pedal edema they have given the clinical scenario but the hint was mustard oil was written in the question mustard oil it is epidemic dropsy then just below to that again you can see that coincidence that ki humne do statement pade and they both were asked continuously in your exam relative risk is calculated in the cohort study there are easy straight forward question then there was a question from the the protein energy malnutrition the difference between the marasmus and quercetin core i told you it's very important quercetin core mein patient ko edema hoga marasmus mein edema nahi hoga you can see the image also i have shown you so if the word edema was there the answer was quercetin core then we have discussed about the dysfluxomine i already told you dysfluxomine is iron chelator we have discussed twice in the class then we have discussed about mycin agravis mycin agravis se do question aaye the it was type 2 hypersensitivity second that they have given the clinical scenario on the diagnosis pucha tha and i told you that mycin agravis mein patient ko in the morning there is no symptom but towards the end of the day there will be muscle weakness fatigue ptosis diplopia that is going to develop and they have given this very classical scenario subah mein koi problem nahi hai towards the evening the patient is having the symptom that is mycin agravis the next we from the pharmacology we have got a question on the smoking cessation they have asked that there is a lady who wants to stop the smoking for smoking cessation the drug that can be used is the valenciline valenciline is the the alpha 4 beta 2 agonist partial agonist nicotine receptor that is used then there is a preferred mode of contraception during the lactation they have given that the lady is in the lactating period postpartum period the preferred uh, the preferred mode of contraception is the uh, pop progesterone only pills now some students are saying that ki usme pucha tha ki for long term contraception what is to be done so again it's not clear whether this word is there or not if it is there then the answer is going to be different if it's not there it's just written post uh, postpartum the contraceptive of choice is pops then there was again the very famous question again the soap bubble appearance this time they have not given this image of breast they have given the image of the tibia and the, almost the same image was there of the tibia the soap bubble appearance that is seen in the giant seal tumor then the classical bamboo spine bamboo spine is seen in ankylosing spondylitis again it was a easy straight forward direct question then uh, we have discussed few of the mcqs the clinical mcqs from the biochemistry also and one of the mcq was straight forward was asking your exam ki patient ko there is darkening of urine on standing there is cartilage pigmentation cartilage uh, breakdown on chronosis is there what which enzyme is deficit it is alkaptone urea and i told you that it is due to deficiency of homogeneity oxidase the exact question we have discussed in the qrs then there was again very famous question the castel necklace appearance is multiple time asked in your exam castel necklace is due to deficiency of vitamin b3 there was a question on neurotrophic defect it has the multifactorial inheritance multifactorial inheritance then there was a question on the bitot spot bitot spot they have not given the image but they have told you that there is white foamy conjunctiva it is due to deficiency of which vitamin it is vitamin a deficiency then there were two questions from few chromocytoma and both are there you can see here both the description one there was a clinical diagnosis that you have made have to make they told you that the patient is having profuse sweating headache palpitation episodic this is very classical for few chromocytoma the second they asked that which investigation you will do you will do 24 hour metanephrin levels and we have written that you will you will check the metanephrin levels they are going to be elevated so i have what what i want to conclude here is in the qrs session which we had for almost two and a half days and we have almost tried to cover all the subjects in two and a half days of the marathon and out of that there was 51 direct question which i have told you 51 direct question and there were many indirect question that was there although we are the students were not able to recall all the questions so we cannot say the exact number but it was very helpful and uh, the as you can see that these are the screenshot of the the class only that we had at our eyes and the these are the questions that uh, they have appeared almost as it is in the exam in case uh, the language may be different but if uh, if anything is there you can you can share to improve if there is any 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 deviation was there in the language or the scheme of the question right thank you guys